Some are calling it Novichok II. It is now time that the Russian state comes forward and explains exactly what has gone on. Just a few kilometers from where a former Russian spy and his daughter were poisoned uh, four months ago, an area couple are in critical condition, victims of the same military-grade nerve agent. Moscow again denies unleashing a Novichok. It offers uh, to help in the probe, uh, help once again rejected by London this time. A new attack, or were the couple's collateral victims of the remnants of the first one? We'll ask who done it, but also about the timing. When the subjects were poisoned, it was during the build-up to Vladimir Putin's re-election as Russian president. Now it's happening during the World Cup, one that could feature, by the way, a Russia-England semi-final. That would coincide with a potentially fractious NATO summit that takes place next week, followed by Donald Trump's trip to Britain, and then it's Helsinki for a one-on-one -on -one encounter with the master of the Kremlin. Today in the France 24 debate, we're looking at uh, what's uh, going on uh, in and around Salisbury with our correspondent, uh, Benedict Pavio, who joins us from London here in the studio, journalist and commentator Dimitri Dukochko. Welcome back to the show, sir. Hello. And France 24's Douglas Herbert from our international affairs desk is with us as well. The France 24 debate on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24 debate. It's early days, uh, but once again, Britain's clearly uh, pointing the finger at uh, Russia in this instance. It says uh, that the couple exposed handled a contaminated item. Now the question is, what item? Where did they get it? Julia Kim has more. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll try to go to that uh, report uh, by Julie Kim. Uh, before we do, uh, let me turn to Benedict Pavio. Yeah, the police have been speaking in the past hour, Benedict, saying that uh, they definitely say it's Novichok and they definitely say there's a contaminated item, but they don't know what it is. That's right. So uh, the sequence of events is that the incident happened on Saturday, that two people, as we speak, are critical in hospital. Uh, Charlie Rowley and Dawn Sturgis, uh, 44 and 45 years old. Uh, they are both British nationals. And late last night, we found out that it was indeed Novichok that they were poisoned by. We don't know if it's the same batch as that that was used uh, to attempt to murder and uh, certainly successfully poisoned Sergei Skripal, the ex-Russian spy, and his daughter visiting him from Moscow, Julia. And in the last half an hour, British media are indeed reporting uh, that uh, this man and this woman in, who were found uh, ill uh, and in a coma in Amesbury on Saturday and taken uh, to Salisbury District Hospital, where the Skripals had been uh, treated uh, successfully, I might say, and then discharged, that it is now, it seems, that we're on the verge of getting an official police confirmation that they did indeed handle an object uh, that was contaminated. So was this accidental? Was this left by the perpetrator or perpetrators uh, who tried to poison and did poison uh, the Skripals? What is interesting, and possibly no coincidence, is that Dawn Sturgis, uh, lived in a home, um, John Baker, a home for homeless people, uh, that has now been fully evacuated. Originally, uh, on Saturday, Sunday, uh, it was just her room that had been examined. I understand the whole building has been evacuated in the last few hours, uh, and that is, I'm told, very near the restaurant, uh, that restaurant called Zizi, Z-I-double-Z-I, -Z -I, uh, in which the Skripals uh, had a meal and in which, allegedly, Mr. Skripal uh, appeared very angry about something. Oh, so there was there was a uh, um, uh, first uh, speculation that we read about about uh, the fact that they sat on this park bench in Salisbury on Friday night. Now you're saying the the attention is turning towards this restaurant. Well, it's turning to uh, the home in which Dawn Sturgis uh, was. Now uh, we don't know. We still don't know today, as I speak, four months later where the Skripals were um, actually poisoned. We believe, uh, according to the information we've been given by British police, is that that Novichok was delivered on the handle of Mr Skripal's home in Salisbury. Uh, 
but we don't know when that contamination happened, or maybe the police do, but we have not been told. So uh, there is a theory in which the person or persons uh, who, had, who poisoned the Skripals with the Novichok uh, ran through some fields and possibly left residue, maybe uh, a vial of some kind, a syringe, etc. What is interesting is that the Minister of the Interior, the Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, early on today in the House of Commons, having chaired a special, uh, what is called here a COBRA meeting, an emergency meeting, um, that he specified that all the decontaminated areas to do with the poisoning of the Skripals had been successfully decontaminated and that there was no reason to believe that this current uh, contamination of these two individuals had be happened in those sites. Now, the reason that that message is very important to deliver and that the British government wants to get it out to the people, particularly in Salisbury, who live there or who have businesses there, uh, or indeed potentially any tourists or people who want to go there, is that there is real concern amongst Salisbury people and the neighbouring uh, area because they were assured that there was no risk of contamination of any kind. And tonight, in the last half an hour, as you quoted, we hear that this couple, this man and this woman, fighting for their lives in the district hospital in Salisbury, were, it would seem, handled a, an article of some kind. What we're not being told is if the police have this article um, and um, if they don't, if they have some idea of where to get yeah, how it. Do they... What I do know is that apparently we now know the last movements of this couple on Friday night, and that was crucial to establish. Right, we're going to talk about those movements, but again, a, a lot of unknowns, as Benedict Pavio is telling us, but uh, the authorities quick to rule that, yes, it is Novichok, and quick to point the finger at Moscow. Yes, indeed. If um, uh, Porton Down, the military laboratory, the Ministry of Defence laboratory, the very same one that identified Novichok, uh, that is the same one that actually came out last night via, we learnt this through the police, and identified that this was Novichok, but we don't yet know whether it's the same batch. Perhaps we will never know if it were the same batch. And this right, is let, where let, the Benedict, I'm going to interrupt you. We're, I'm going to interrupt you because we're going to go to that. Persistent. We're going to go to that report now by Julia Kim. Diplomatic mudslinging between Britain and Russia after Home Secretary Sajid Javid confirmed the nerve agent that poisoned a British couple over the weekend was the same variety used against former spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter. Speaking before Parliament, Javid demanded the Kremlin explain itself. It is completely unacceptable for our people to be either deliberate or accidental targets or for our streets, our parks, our towns to be dumping grounds for poison. I have no doubt that in the coming days and, and weeks we will see a, a increased campaign of disinformation uh, from the Russian state. As it did in the Skripal case, the Kremlin denied any involvement and pointed the finger of blame at the British government. We call on Theresa May's government to stop the intrigue and games with chemical poison agents. I am convinced that one day the government of Theresa May will offer its apologies to Russia and to the international community for what they have done. Dawn Sturgis and Charlie Rowley are fighting for their lives in hospital after being exposed to Novichok over the weekend. They were discovered in their homes in the town of Amesbury in southern England. But they were reportedly in Salisbury's Queen Elizabeth Park the night before they fell ill, not far from where former Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia were poisoned with Novichok in March. Britain maintains to this day that the Kremlin is responsible. But Russia has dismissed the government's claims as an attempt to stir up anti-Russian hysteria as the country hosts the final stages of the World Cup. Dr. Herbert, your thoughts on the investigation so far? Is it Novichok too? Is this the exact? Well, first of all, let, let's not over-dramatize things. Um, I think Benedict Pavio was very clear, and she was correct to make a distinction here. Let's be clear. What the British government is saying, the British government has not accused Russia of for a second time, uh, poisoning British citizens on British soil with some uh, nerve agent which was developed in Soviet times. We have not had that actual accusation yet. What we have had is a determination by the laboratory that this is, in fact, this agent Novichok, 
a tasteless, colorless, odorless uh, agent that, you know, is extremely toxic, you know, five to ten times more toxic than VX and sarin, which we talk about quite often. Uh, so they have determined that it is the same class of agent, Novichok. What they haven't determined, as Benedict said, is that whether or not it's from the same batch. And that is a very, very important distinction to make. Why? There's, there's a lot of- Why is it well, important? Because, when you, because what you just said, the title right now that our viewers see on the screen is Novichok 2. Yes, it's Novichok, but in other words, the, the implication being, is this a second attack? Because the British still very much believe that Russia was behind the actual poisoning of the Skripals back in March. What they haven't done, explicitly yet is to say that the Russian government or Russian agents working for the Russian government are also behind this poisoning. It is an important distinction. They've been clear. They've been very, very at pains every step of the way in all the press conferences but they've had to, st to stress that it is a line of inquiry. They talk about the linkage, Francois, as being absolutely a line of inquiry. When you have two couples poisoned uh, four people in the space of four months in two small English uh, towns right next to each other, obviously any investigator worth their salt is going to be investigating possible link linkage. Are there strong suspicions? Obviously there are strong suspicions. But it is, I think, at this point, before we launch into this debate and overdramatize it, there has been no explicit accusation that Moscow is behind this second attack, at least for now. Dmitry Dikochko, four months later... Yeah. An attack that, or, <clears throat> or a poisoning that takes place just a few kilometers away, yeah. authorities say could be res residual, something residual from the first attack. Uh, that's the most likely scenario, but they're not certain of that. Maybe, maybe, but I don't think Moscow was culprit for the first one. So there are no evidence. Novichok too is, is not so false, you know. There was, in fact, Novichok is not the name of the poison. And it has been explained by, the, by Leonid Rink, which was the professor which was working on this Novichok. Novichok was a kind of registration, a system of registration, of classification, of codification, if you want, of different poisons in the 70s. In Soviet Union, but it was a new, it was and a new it class is not the name. It, it was, and there were it's a class five, it was six, a, but, it, but it means newcomer and in Russian. I mean, it then, was a new classification. They put that label on there because it was supposed this, to be. It, it was manufactured in a and completely the different name, way. The name of Novichok, which you can find anywhere, has been given by this man. You can find this book on Amazon. You can you can buy it for twenty five euro, euros, I think. That is a man who was working in the laboratories, Mirzayanov, Vil Mirzayanov. Chemical he experts. He has written that in 2008, and he explains what Novichok is. Yeah, but chemical experts... And, yes. Chemical experts these past days who've been interviewed... If the Skripals had been poisoned by Novichok, they would be dead. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have survived. There is the, then that is a, not what the, the chemical Swiss, experts don't a say. A Swiss that laboratory has They're, also made if, if you are it, inquiry. I just want to clarify and something. They have found would, but BZ you, thirty-five. And they would not. It, I did say before it is much more toxic than other yeah. known chemical agents. Yeah, However, that's true. there are known antidotes to it. You can apply antidotes. We did see both of the scripals. Uh, back in March, they are now both because out of the hospital. They've made a, a near full recovery you know, by by all reports right now. So to, you can be administered an anecdote to it, and it does not necessarily kill, and it also depends if on the you way you find, ingest it. If you know way. the antidote, it means you, you are able to make this Novichok, which oh, is no. exactly the proof that anybody can do it. No, not anybody and can, not anybody can do it. Britain, not anybody can do it. Accused can do it. Dmitry Dukochko, the, the Boris Johnson chemical, and chemical and experts accused in Russia because Novichok could be made only in Russia, chemical. which is not true. Chemical experts who've been interviewed, and several of them over the past yes. several days, have said we're yes. talking about a very volatile nerve agent. Yeah, it's true. Not anybody and can make strong. it. You can't just make it with a recipe over the internet. And also, it has to be handled with extreme care. You can't just have some, some courier come along and, and hand it over. That's what they're saying. And the, yes, and the policeman should, should you know, the, the one who, described, who, who discovered the Skripals, who... Should should be died should dead should be died too. Dimitri, let me let so, me just make a point. Listen, you're you are know, absolutely right. Why? You are absolutely right in in pointing out there is no absolute hundred percent empirical evidence that Russia is so, responsible and for the first. Why don't but, 
But, Why don't not the British but want let, to let cooperate just, with Russia? Hold on one second. Let they me have, just. I, I could answer. That. I could try to to give the beginning of an answer, an analysis of an answer to that question. The reason that this is a debate right now, and the reason that we're sitting here, and the reason that it is such a fiery debate, it's Russia's fault. It's not Russia's fault. Russia denies. The West says it did it. The reason is because we have so many recent precedents of very similar incidents where you had these very starkly different narratives as what happened. Russia says one thing, the West says another, never the two sides meet. We saw this with Crimea annexation. We saw this with the Ukraine intervention in the East. We saw this with the downing of the jet, uh, the Malaysian Airlines jet over Ukraine. Uh, we've seen this with cyber warfare. We've seen this with Russian meddling in the elections. We've seen this with Russian doping scandals. There's always the same scenario, you whether could, it's this you could or add something else. Syria, if where you want Moscow Duma says, absolutely not. This is all propaganda yeah. and lies by the West. And the West saying, absolutely not. Let's investigate it. The yeah. reason they have rejected investigation. That's a, we saw this with Syria. Yeah. With the chemical we weapons, killing. the Russians yeah. want to get their we, investigators in there because the West suspects, and perhaps they have a right to do to, to suspect that Russia will taint the investigation or wants to somehow control the investigation. You, you That's know why very we're having well this debate. That you know that the inquiry of the OPCW, which was who went to Douma in Syria, has been stopped at the border because they were firing at the moment when they were they were waited and they should have come. Uh, to Douma just after the alleged attack. Then the child who was shown on the videos by the white helmets who are Muslim uh, look, brothers. This is a different debate to me. Uh, we're, we're, this, this is, this this is, we're talking child, about Syria This weapons. child has been, has been, has, has, has been uh, shown in Den Haag. Be and nobody has written in. anything Benedict, about that. Benedict Pavio, how no. much... Has Moscow's uh, de denial? How much? How many people in Britain believe Moscow's denials? Well, um, we haven't had a poll today uh, to find that out, but there is a, a skepticism certainly towards uh, Russia and towards Russian uh, denials. Um, it is true, on the other hand, uh, that many people, not just Salisbury residents or the surrounding area, uh, feel that there is somewhat of a vacuum um, and that although the public, uh, both in Salisbury, the residents and across the United Kingdom were warned that this would be a long uh, investigation, complex investigation, and now I'm referring to the Skripals one, uh, that there We've seen them on television. Uh, the Russian embassy asks to meet the Skripals, which has been denied repeatedly uh, by the authorities here. But it is felt that there isn't enough information really forthcoming. And, of course, there has been so far uh, no message from the police, uh, from the intelligence services, as to who, uh, either in the singular or the plural, was responsible for that uh, attempted, uh, well, poisoning and killing of Sergei Skripal and Yulia Skripal. I would, however, just like to add one sentence, um, and that is about the couple that are tonight fighting for their lives, uh, Dawn Sergis and Charlie Rowley. Uh, the police last night, I'd like to underline one sentence that was used. There is nothing in their background to suggest the pair were targeted. Uh, so I completely um, agree with Douglas. The, um, the, the real message coming out here is one of implication of Russia, and certainly harking back to the Skripals, that was targeted. But the working theory of the police and of the counterterrorism uh, experts and intelligence services <laughs> seems to be very much over the last 48 hours uh, that there, it is an accidental contamination, and we don't think this is, in that sense, a Novichok too. So two possibilities, if it is an accidental uh, uh, contamination. Possibility number one, that, it, that, it, that you know, this is completely accidental and that it's a residual, some residual vial of, or something that, uh, I don't know if it's a vial or not, uh, that, 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 that contaminated this Article couple. is the word well, that's article. being used. Here. Article is the word they're using. Uh, volatile. Or, volatile. Or that um, this is being done as a smokescreen. Well, look, because I've seen both out who? there. Yeah, no, I, that this is. Well, look, I mean, listen to the what the, the you know what they're saying in Russia. You know, I was, I was monitoring a lot of the Russian media today. Um, it's a parallel universe of, of news coverage about this story because you have, um, you know, on uh, the, the first channel, which is the state-controlled uh, first channel, uh, they're convinced that this really was almost a staged 
um, uh, poisoning in order to uh, sabotage, in order to scare away fran fans from the World Cup. Russia has been, you know, just when Russia has been widely universally uh, 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 praised for uh, doing or for organizing a I, fabulous I, I cannot, World on Cup. That score, on that score, I can read you a, a tweet from, uh, from the Russian embassy in the Netherlands, which uh, they put out, accusing Britain of uh, rebuffing uh, its offer uh, uh, to help and of stirring anti-Russian hysteria amidst the backdrop of uh, the World Cup. But, but Francois, it always comes back to this because we've talked, how many times have I been on the set, we've talked about this. There is a there is a standard narrative, and Dimitri, no matter where you stand on this, I think you'll agree with me, there is a standard narrative in Russia that somehow Russia is being unfairly treated by the West, that Russia is, the West is somehow trying to humiliate Russia, that Russia is somehow, mother, so. that, that mother, mother Russia is somehow under siege from forces in the West that are out to get Russia and bring Russia down and undermine Russia. Look, there's, on, look there's, on the map. You where can call are, it, there's a word the for it. There's a lot of conspiracy. It's constant conspiracy theories, and it is a lot of paranoia. No, and it, and, and public no opinion, public opinion, which the vast majority of Russians, the vast majority, especially older Russians, they get their news from television. They get tens of millions of Russians are not, not the young Russians in the cities on the internet who have access to a lot of information. Older Russians get their information from the state-controlled television. You hear it enough, okay. of course you believe it. Of course you believe it. That's the narrative. And you know, you can say exactly the same about the Western public opinion. Not they to also the same receive extent. everything by the medias, and the medias are very much anti-Russian. But the media are not all state control. there is a lot of information. The media, there's, there's, there there's, are information media which are also under state That's control. another debate for another night, Dimitri, and right? I think <laughs> there <laughs> may be problems about that, you know. All right, let, let's just look before, before, now, yeah. before we, go, we go further into this. this, can, this you, can you just answer a question? Why the Skripals were targeted by Russia. Which was the interest of Russia? Why were the Skripals targeted by Russia? Well, yeah, you, you can... Well, well, all right, you let, me, can let, me, let, me, let me ask you the question, which is... Why? Uh, did we, it what, was, what did we see? Let's look at the timeline. Skripal was nobody. Dmitry Dikochko, let's look at the timeline of it. Let's, let's assume, yes. as you contend, that Russia had nothing to do with the poisoning of the Skripals. Nonetheless, Vladimir Putin, and we were... The France 24 debate went to Moscow... Yes. Uh, for the, his re-election. Yes. And it was an issue that he used to his advantage. It galvanized him for his re-election. Whether or not Russia did it, it certainly helped Vladimir Putin in term, in, in that us versus them mental, uh, mentality, galvanizing public opinion in favor of the Russian I, I have told you that, exactly, that thanks to uh, the accusations, the British accusations, there was less abstentions than I was expecting, for instance, and that everybody was expecting in Russia. Yes, that, is, that has helped Putin, but I don't think that Putin could expect that and that he would have organized such a fantastic thing like the Skripals, who are nobody again. Well, first no, of all, nothing. remember, remember just, one thing. Just that's to not have true. a that's better... Not, that's not exactly true. Just the, the, to have a better participation the in the elections. The description... He didn't of, need, need that. The description uh, of Skripal was that, not the daughter, the father... Uh, was that he was actually a double agent, right? He had once he worked was. for Russian intelligence, and, he and then he was providing intelligence for the Brits. For Vladimir Putin, yes. I think you'll agree with me, for Vladimir but Putin, he was in there prison is nothing, during five years. There is, they nothing, could kill worse, him there is nothing worse than betraying your country and, but, and turning your back on. There's nothing worse. I'm not... So they even could, if you don't say that Vladimir Putin, that it's too simplistic, picks up the phone to organize it, of course not. It's the same thing with the same debate we had with Alexander Litvinenko, where Moscow yeah, categorically yeah. denied and to this day yeah. will not let any uh, extradition be, be done for the people who are suspected of being implicated. The same exact thing. Why would Litvinenko, you could say he was no one. What did he do at the time? What did he do? Well, he betrayed from Russia's perspective his country. He did something. He uh, he he stabbed uh, he stabbed but, the powers that be in the back, and they wanted Skripal, to get revenge. Skripal was in prison during five years. They could they could kill him if they wanted to, Be to take Pavio. revenge. Benedict Pavio. And it was much well, easier. Benedict Pavio. Interpretations that has been given here uh, about why uh, the poisoning of the Skripal. 
uh, whether one believes it um, or, or not, is that it was actually uh, very much, and in fact, uh, P President Putin's name was used at the time, uh, not by the Prime Minister, I should point out, but by others. And, and that was to send a strong message to anybody who was a virulent critic uh, of President Putin and indeed uh, of, uh, of the Russian authorities or Russian government. Uh, and indeed, I should just point out two facts. One is uh, that 14 uh, deaths of uh, Russian citizens in this country are being reinvestigated. And the other one, I think, that is pertinent to the discussion that you're having uh, there is very much that 28 other countries, uh, not just the United Kingdom, expelled Russian diplomats. And of course, we should, uh, in out of fairness, point out that Russia also expelled expelled uh, also Western diplomats. So it's 28 other countries who believe uh, the evidence uh, that certainly after that trip to Brussels, uh, Theresa May showed them. Right, and, and that brings us to uh, what the events that are going to take place next week. Uh, Benedict Pavio, uh, a week from Friday, the President of the United States uh, will be in London. Donald Trump will be coming there after a NATO summit that could be quite fractious. How will Theresa May handle him? I think with great care, and I think uh, we do not have uh, any specific details yet confirmed of this trip. Uh, but we do and will know this that affair will this affair weigh over that trip in the way that uh, the Skripal's affair uh, has weighed over uh, weighed over the the build up to Vladimir Putin's re-election. <laughs> Well, it's certainly going to be one of the, uh, the, the topics. There's no way that this couldn't be. We don't know what details uh, we could get by then if this article that is said to have been handled by these two people uh, is found. Uh, and I should point out also that, in a sense, that could be good news for the investigators, because if they find the article that allegedly has contaminated these people that contains Novichok, uh, and they find that it's the same batch, uh, that's a possibility, or, and if they find and it's revealed where this article was found, then that could give further clues to the investigators uh, investigating the script arts. But back to your question about President Trump and Theresa May next week, I think we can almost be sure that President Trump will spend very little time here in the British capital, that he'll probably see the Queen in Windsor, uh, so that's nice and far away from Buckingham Palace, not in central London, that he'll probably see Theresa May in her official residence in the country, Chequers, which of course is heavily guarded uh, and demonstrators won't get anywhere near. Um, and what we've learnt this afternoon, which might amuse you, is there's a thing called Baby Trump, uh, which is a balloon that will be allowed, we've learnt this afternoon, to fly over Westminster uh, both um, the day, well, on the day he lands on the 12th and on the 13th. As for the content, I think that Theresa May, in this really pre-Brexit divorce on March the 29th, 2019, will be very careful to try and find common ground with President Trump. Careful to find common ground with President Trump, but uh, Trump, we saw it with the recent G7 summit, he likes he likes to be provocative, shall we put it that way? He, he likes to be provocative, Francois. So with this affair, is this going to add to the provocation in some way? Because it's all in the build-up to that two-way summit he's going to be having after he's in the UK uh, with Vladimir Putin in Helsinki on on the 16th of July. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. But look, I think, you know, I think like as with the G7, where Donald Trump already had his sights focused on his meeting with Kim Jong Un in 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 Singapore, and his he was he's barely really there, and the only thing he really did there was to sort of uh, trash the entire summit and and insult the leaders who were there. I think we're going to see a similar dynamic here. I mean, let's at the NATO one, summit. Uh, well, at the NATO summit, and I also think that his his long overdue, long postponed uh, meeting to the UK, which as Benedict pointed out, I mean, one of the reasons is is because yes, of the threats of these street protests. They were trying to find sort of a right moment for him to finally be able to come and pay this long overdue. Bi a, a visit to a supposedly long-standing uh, U.S. ally. It's still going to be a very awkward business. I uh, visit. I still suspect there are going to be quite a few protests. We heard about the the balloon stunt, but I do think he's going to be looking ahead to his visit with Vladimir Putin. If anything, I think he's going to be an extremely light touch uh, when it comes to this whole topic.
topic with Putin because he's definitely, I don't think, going to be in sort of the register, the tone, uh, you know, on the offense of pointing his finger at Vladimir Putin. I think, he, if anything, he's uh, going to be but trying to we, we, butter, butter up Vladimir Putin a little bit ahead of that summit. We're having a heated discussion about Novichok, the polarization of public opinion. No, I don't is think that, so. Is they, that, they, they both know it is not very serious. Is that, so is, they will they will yeah. have much much more important here it, problems I think to discuss. Then uh, Trump Trump, Trump wanted to, big... to to meet Putin. No. Putin has accepted. The Russians were expecting other provocations also. Well, this one was not was not uh, waited. I, I think they were not expecting this one. They were expecting in Ukraine, in Syria, and in Transnistria. Uh, so. Well, for the time being, it has not happened. But they they were expecting that during the championship, the football uh, mondial. I, I, um, well, it hasn't when, happened yet. When the yet, script balls were poisoned, it will, maybe it will. When the script balls were poisoned, there was solidarity among the NATO members. The United States, uh, by the way, expelled more Russians than, they the, did. than even Donald, the British. Donald Trump did it under. You're absolutely right, and he did it under a lot this of pressure. Time around, His natural impulse would if, not have been to expel those diplomats. If if the UK presses the point and, over this second uh, attack, if there are conditions. Do you see the same? It scenario? depends. You know, there are so many factors that it depends on. It's a lot of speculation. What's yep. going to happen in the investigation between now and that visit? It's still, you know, a week away. Uh, what, and and also his relationship with Theresa May. You know, we we say Donald Trump doesn't really have friends and allies in Europe. We always talk about Macron being his close friend. I'm not even sure how close they are at this point. Um, I so I just don't see this being a major element. I don't see this as being sort of a, a big bone of contention. I think Donald Trump, to be honest, is going to have more of his mind on going up to to golf in Scotland. He's going to be spending some time up there after his visit in the UK. I think he's going to want to get up to his golf courses and then and then go over and buddy up with uh, Vladimir Putin. That that's where his mind's going to be. Uh, with Putin, I think they will have to, well, they will speak about Middle East and China. And I think the main problem for Trump is China and the relationship between Russia and China and, of course, between the United States and China. All right, the next week is going to be a test uh, of the, uh, the uh, strength of uh, the NATO alliance. It's going to be uh, as well, a test of the transatlantic relationship when Donald Trump visits the UK. Uh, the UK, uh, where there's a lot of outrage once again, particularly in the area around Salisbury. The Skripals, uh were poisoned a few kilometers from where the latest incident took place. Now, at that Baptist church hog roast in Amesbury, where that second couple was seen last Saturday, eyewitnesses described the man acting friendly but speaking in a not very coherent manner. The locals there didn't realize what had happened at the time, and they are upset. When we feel violated, you know, it seems that, um, you know, something awful has happened in a, a friendly community and that uh, we, we feel that somebody's taken advantage of us and we, we really feel hurt by all that has gone on. Benedict Pavio, that, that outrage, uh, I, I suspect, is uh, all across the UK, uh, this feeling of feeling violated, um, will the UK be, again, it's the question of, uh, is the UK alone this time around, or do they have the support of their allies? Well, I think as Douglas was at pains to point out, I think that we're in a very different phase at the moment, and we, we don't know how it's going to escalate. The war of words has indeed more than begun, uh, particularly with Sajid Javid and his statement in Parliament. Uh, we played a clip there of really demanding an explanation from the Russians uh, about what, what's going on, what happened with the Skripals and, you know, Basically, it's fess up, confess, and then uh, you know be be an adult about this and and come and and uh, offer some sort of solution and help um, about this uh, because you've left residue and this is how these people are being contaminated. But at the moment, um, this is really the very beginning of this investigation. So I think we don't know how that is going to evolve. At the moment, the prime minister is coming back from Germany, where she saw uh, Angela Merkel, and this was about Brexit. It will be important and interesting to see in the day or two, three days to come what the prime minister herself says, and she will be the lead on this. Tomorrow, she's got a very big Brexit day. She's gathering and knocking heads together in Chequers, that uh, country residence, where she's going to try and get her government uh, all to agree, her cabinet to agree on the position on Brexit. That'll be tough enough, and that's what we all thought we would be concentrating on tomorrow. Instead of which, of course, events, dear boy, as it said here, this is what's happening. 
All the meanwhile, on Saturday at 3 o'clock London time, 4 o'clock Paris time, You've got an English team uh, that is facing Sweden uh, that hopes to continue uh, and go, yes, all the way to the semi-finals and indeed the final. Uh, you've got some very excited England and, and maybe will, will we well, see the British Will we see the British fans. Prime Minister be, uh, going back on a word and going to Moscow should England do the impossible and, well, they might have to beat Russia in the semis to get there? In three words, I don't think so. Um, okay. Because, or four words, because uh, there is this ban, and I was just about to say in one sentence, there is this ban that has come from the Skripal whole episode four months ago, almost to the day, where officials, meaning government officials, and also royals are boycotting uh, the World Cup. And they're not so going to go back so. on Some it. Some are even asking for the English team to pull out. But I don't think we're at that stage that, yet. That, so who knows how it's going to play well, out uh, no, no, cha no chance of that when they have their best, <laughs> their best chance uh, since 1966. 1966, yeah. Uh, Benedict Pavio, many thanks. <laughs> we're going to uh, tur turn to Charles Pellegrin for the latest on the World Cup next. I want to thank as well Dimitri Dikochko and Douglas Herbert.